Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about what if my ex starts dating while we're in no contact? Mm, that's a worst fear for Ooh. some of you. Oh, it hurts. Mm. It hurts. I've been there. And when you find out, however it may be, that your ex is dating somebody after your breakup, it can feel devastating. Mm -hmm. It is one of the worst feelings in the world to feel kind of like you've been replaced, that they didn't want to be in a relationship with you, now they want to be with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And you can't help but compare yourself. You try to look up every single piece of information about this new person that you can find. Who are they? How yep. did they meet? You have all these questions. You're confused. It's shocking mm -hmm. and it's devastating. And it feels just awful to feel like they have found somebody that's better than you or that they're more attracted to than you and you just feel like you're not special to them anymore and it just it's just one of the worst feelings and believe me i get it i've been there and one of the first things that overwhelms you is this fear of like primal panic mm -hmm. where if you've ever lost your parents at the store when you're little, you feel that primal panic, like you're gonna die, like you've, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die without this person, without these people, without my tribe, without, you know, and it just, on this deep, visceral level, you really feel like you're dying. And, you know, just to start off, to put you at ease, yes, the person they're dating now is probably going to be a rebound, in most cases it is, and, you're likely going to build it up and give it more meaning than it actually has to your ex. But I know that feeling. You're scared. You think that they're going to wind up marrying your ex, that they're going to see how amazing your ex is, meaning this new person, and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, this person is so great and so amazing. The way you see your ex and the way you're attached to your ex and that that's it. It's over. Mm -hmm. And so... You spend most of your time ruminating about where they're at, what they're doing, are they with this new person, you're driving by their house, you're stalking social media, you're going <laughs> past their work, you're doing all these things. I know because I hear it every week. You got to do your best not to do those things, but I understand you're obsessed with if it's going to fall apart and if you're going to get another chance. Right. And the thing with social media is that people always put the best parts of their life. So they always like to make a presentation about how they're happy, about how life is going well. And so you're not likely to see how things can be difficult in your ex's new relationship mm -hmm. on social media or even through the grapevine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do see that an ex will talk with you and they'll say, you know what, I'm just not ready for a relationship at all. <laughs> and then whatever, weeks later, <laughs> months later, you see them with somebody new and you're just scratching your head thinking, but you told me that you weren't ready. How are you ready now? What you, is it about this person? You just said you didn't want a relationship. Mm -hmm. That you weren't ready for a relationship. And now you're dating somebody new? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Right. And so you're thinking, why are they with somebody right now? Well, there's several reasons. The first one being that they might be experiencing attachment issues. Meaning that they are seeking external validation. That they need to be around somebody else in a romantic way in order to feel safe. So these can be from very deeply embedded messages from childhood. And I, I find that women struggle with this especially. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a man to be okay. You need a big, strong man to take care of you. And so they might be operating under this belief of, I need somebody around me. I need to be in a partnership in order to be okay. They just can't be alone. They can't self-soothe. They can't calm themselves down or deal with their own stressors without having somebody there. Yep. The second major reason is if they've been unhappy for a really long time. So sometimes you'll find partners that have been neglected and feel, felt like they haven't gotten their needs met. So by the time the end of a relationship happens, they're like, I'm ready to go out there and find somebody who can give me that attention that I've seeked for so long. Yeah. So many of us get caught into these routines when we're with somebody for a long time that we just kind of expect them to tolerate our behaviors, our poor behaviors, mm -hmm. not, not all of you had poor behavior, right. but for those of you that did, you may have been neglectful, you weren't listening to your partner, and of course, I'm not saying your ex was perfect either, 
Some people are going to be like, oh, we're going gonna to blame us. <laughs> I'm not blaming, but it's something to really reflect upon mm -hmm. what you brought to the relationship and the areas that you may have been neglecting your partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, another big reason is that they might be dealing with depression. And we actually see this one quite a bit. You know, we ask a couple questions. Well, was your ex sleeping okay? Were they eating okay? Were they interested in the things that they usually are? Did they have a lot of energy? We come to find out that a lot of what their ex was experiencing were symptoms of depression. Yeah, it actually happens a lot more than you realize. Mm -hmm. Because that person has just felt you know, this overwhelming uh, feeling of exhaustion, of being tired, mm -hmm. and along comes somebody new, and you get out, out oxytocin, as Margaret put it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because, you know, when you're a lo in a long-term relationship mm -hmm. for years, you don't give that person those same feelings of that you get in a new mm -hmm. connection. Right, that excitement, the thrill, yeah. what are they going to say next? And normally people are the most loving in the first couple years of a, a relationship. It's really, true. those first couple months. Oh, you're the most gorgeous person I've seen on the planet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so happy that our souls are tied. <laughs> so you get lost in, in uh, this validation and it, just in this magnetic draw it, of a person. It's attraction. Yeah. It's attraction. Yeah, you get sucked in. Mm -hmm. And that can really help somebody get pulled out of depression really quickly. Yeah. Suddenly life is colorful again. Suddenly they have something to look forward to once they wake up in the morning. And yeah. I know on your end, you're thinking, well, I could have provided all that. I, I gladly would have been there and would have been supportive or I have been. Mm -hmm. It's much different once that attachment really has, has settled and, and time has passed. It's not like that new spark. Yeah, it's not fair. It's not a fair comparison. Yeah. You bring a lot more to the table in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. But that overwhelming excitement of a new person, just, you know, that really has a big impact on somebody that's been depressed for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, we're talking about excitement because it's, un un you know, it's important to understand that your ex has these fantasies about this new person, mm -hmm. who they think they're going to be, who this person temporarily appears to be. It's like a mirage mm -hmm. in the beginning, you know, <laughs> it's a, really because it doesn't last because very few people, you'd have to be really, really secure uh, as a person and have done a lot of work to be the same way. Mm -hmm two, three years in than you were in the beginning. You'd have to be really emotionally mature and attentive mm -hmm. and, you know, have worked through a lot of your own stuff. So this person looks like a mirage and it's just a fantasy in the beginning. And they don't make those mistakes that you do. They don't see those red flags that you have, but they will just give it time. Mm -hmm. And the important thing to remember about this is that it can be like an addiction and on a physiological level our bodies do get addicted to these chemicals of bonding and of connection it makes us feel safe it makes us feel really good and so you stepping back in to the picture as an ex saying hey i've been thinking about you i really want to work things out why aren't we talking why did this relationship end it can feel like you're getting in the way of that addiction Yes. So you're stopping them from getting what they crave. And that's why sometimes you'll see exes respond in a really hostile way. You know, even, even if you were to inquire, okay, well, who's this new person? How are you suddenly dating somebody new? Well, that's none of your business. Mm -hmm. This is my life. Yeah. They're cold. They become mm -hmm. a completely different person. And any attempts of you to reach out really just feels like you're trying to stop them from getting this drug. Mm -hmm. So now you look like the person that's trying to keep me from this thing that's making me so happy. And you know, this is really important as to why you have to stay in no contact. Because if you reach out for them temporarily, at least in the beginning, it seems like you could cause harm to their new connection, right? So they're afraid, they're not going to tell you this, but they're afraid by you reaching out, it could damage the new person's interest level. If you reach out on a date or cause some kind of drama or something happens, now you might be ruining it for them. That's mm -hmm. how they see it. They right. could be really selfish in that moment. So, you know, you're out on a date or they're out on a date and you reach out and, 
now they mention it to the person they're on the date with, it causes some problems. Mm -hmm. Or maybe now they're like, oh, it's just my ex, they won't leave me alone. And now you're like this afterthought, or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to feel like that. Right, and you might be thinking, well, isn't it a good thing that I ruin their connection? That's what I want to happen. <laughs> yeah. But really, it, it does end up biting you back because they end up getting angry at you and it distances you more from your ex. Yeah. I want you to, to remember that. Yeah. And you also seem like a backup. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so at this point, their mentality is that they don't want to lead you on. A lot of times exes can be extremely stubborn after the breakup. They dig their feet in the sand. You're not telling me that my decision is wrong. You're not going to convince me otherwise. And so at this point, they don't want to give you any indication that they want to get back together. Yep. And, and so you want to really be careful with any reach outs because a lot of people will reach out in a really hopeful way. Oh, if I just say this right combination of words in a text. Mm -hmm. The then, clean slate message. <laughs> yeah. I gave them the clean slate. <laughs> yeah, then they will be convinced. But you really want to take this power back for yourself. You know, there is no magic spell or magic combination of words that you can write to your ex that will cause them to change their mind at this moment. Suddenly hundreds of bots just sighed <laughs> at your comment about not magic spells not working, right? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> There's tons of spell casters on the... <laughs> Please uh, don't ever fall for that please spam. Don't. Please. please don't. No, there is just it just isn't true. You know, it's magical thinking and we want to be real with you. When we do talk with you even on call, <laughs> we will say that we will be as honest and transparent as we possibly can. You know, these things don't work. Uh, but what we do know is that feelings do change over time and and with space. So you really want to respect your ex's decision. Okay, you, you want to break up? That's fine. Take all the time you need. Take all the space you need. Yep. I'm not going to be here to interrupt that. When you're ready, you come back to me and let me know. That's, That's right. That's really the stance you want to take. Let them sit with the consequence of mm -hmm. their own choice. Exactly. It was their decision. Now they need to face it. You reaching out, interrupting, and believe me, I know you want to. I've been there. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to him so bad. If we thought it was going to help you, we would tell you to do it. Mm -hmm. The reason we're telling you not to is because we do calls every week, every day, and we see what happens when you do those things. So you just have to understand that, yes, in the beginning, this new person is going to look great, amazing, and exciting, and perfect, and all these other things. But over time, they're going to realize that this new person isn't perfect. And then they're going to start to compare this new person to you a lot more and start to realize that they miss you, that these, the grass wasn't greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to start to look at your social media and watch your stories or contact your friends and family or go the places you may go. And of course, do the indirect direct approach where they look for an excuse to contact you. Mm -hmm. And you might even hear sometimes an ex say, I'm going to marry this person. Or I actually heard one recently <laughs> where they were engaged. Yeah. You know, and it, it can really send you for a spin when you hear this stuff. You want to remember to stay calm. Yes. This is really important. Take a couple breaths, okay? Just because they are dating somebody new does not mean that that's the end of it. Yeah. Okay? Don't freak out and lash out at them. Mm -hmm. I see that a lot. They get so upset they can't control it. You just reach out and you start bombarding them. Oh, I see you moved on so quick, huh? I thought you wanted to want be in a relationship, huh? Right. right. Don't spiral. Stay calm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those messages that you're getting from your ex about them thinking about marriage with this new person, a lot of that is coming from a space of, I'm really excited about this. I'm experiencing all these chemicals. I'm so convinced that this is going to work without really thinking with their logical brain about the repercussions of things. Yeah. And, and so long term, how it's going to go. It's like someone getting morphine and then they're like, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. I'm going to feel like this forever. Exactly. No, you're not. Exactly. <laughs> There's going to be consequences mm -hmm. of it. And many of you have made poor decisions when drunk. These people are drunk in love. <laughs> you can say that. It's true. <laughs> and they're making decisions. Yeah. So just be aware, okay? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and stay calm. Take a couple breaths. Reassure yourself. Uh, the last thing that you want to do is freak out, let your anxiety pour over to your ex because they are going to deny all of this. If you go up to them and tell them, listen, none of this is real. You're just experiencing love chemicals. Trust me, it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. They are going to deny, 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 say, mm -hmm. you know, leave me alone. They're going to get angry. 
yeah. really respect your excess space. We're, we're giving you this information for you and for your insight, not to be sent over to your ex. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's because it, in that moment, you want to be like trying to talk them out of it. You're trying to get them to see. Mm -hmm. If I could just get them to see what they're doing is wrong, mm -hmm. but they're not going to feel like that. And they're, and it's not, they're not going to see it that way. Again, it's going to feel like you're trying to keep them from being happy. Um, and even if they are thinking about you or repairing it, they're not going to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to, they're going to keep it to themselves. Uh, even, just that's the way they work, you know, until they're ready to tell you how they feel. They're going to keep all those things to themselves about stalking you, your social media, and all those other things. So you just got to leave them alone. Hmm. You're probably going to have these fantasies of doing these things, right? I hear this all the time. I have this thing. This is what I want to try. Hmm. I've got this plan. Do this, do that. For example, grand gestures. I want to do this thing. Uh, maybe, you know, your partner was upset because you didn't propose to them, right? Well, I'm going to propose now. I got her this ring. Here it is. I'm going to fly to Europe and give it to them. Doesn't work like that, mm -mm. right? Um, so even though it feels like this new relationship is going to last forever, most of the time I would say it falls apart in six months or so, mm -hmm. six months or less. I would say most of the time. So I know it's hard to believe. I know when you see them posting on social media, how excited they are, how great it looks. It's really hard to believe it. Mm -hmm. But if you get a new car, how long are you excited about the new car? Right? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the first four or five months, you're like, oh, I'm so happy this new car is better than the old or whatever. But after a while, it's just your car, you know, and it's got things about the car that you don't like so much. Mm -hmm. and. Now you realize you paid too much for it. And now you don't like paying that monthly payment, but it takes time. So one last thing that I wanted to share with you guys today is an email. Well, this is from a client that I've been working with. With Now she was the dump E. Her ex broke up with her. And this is what she was told recently. We did a call and I said, please tell me everything that, they, that your ex told you so this is from the dumper, okay? And what they had to say after they dated somebody new. This is good, okay? So they told her, I owe you an apology. I did not do things the right way or in the right order with the breakup. And that's referring to them meeting somebody else before they ended things. Mm. I felt so incredibly disconnected from you and so lonely that I did things out of order. And I'll admit, it was wonderful at first to have someone who just wanted to sit with me and spend time with me. But the way I did it was wrong, and you deserve better. I'm still with that person, and the grass is not greener after all. You and I used to go out and do all kind of fun things together, but they never want to do any of that. They never want to try any new restaurants or go away for the weekend or go to any festivals or even try any new foods. Whenever I ask them to do anything fun, the answer is always no. I'm getting really tired of the answer to everything I want to do as being no. And they're a clean freak and a germaphobe. But you never hassled me about those things or anything like that. They are really sweet and patient, but when I'm with them, all I can think about is how much I miss you. Wow. That is coming from a dumper who left to date somebody else and has been contacting their ex and they seem to be going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And it kind of shares little bits of what we've shared all along the way of what happens with the dumper and they date somebody else. So I wanted to share a specific example because when I heard it, I'm like, you got to tell me that. Send me everything that they said. I'm going to share that in a video. Mm -hmm. And you never know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, sometimes I wish that 
me and you could switch positions as a viewer <laughs> so that you could see the types of things that we hear and that we experience. And it, it really does give you perspective. Mm -hmm. You never know what next is going through. You really don't. Just because they present to one way or tell people one mm -hmm. thing, it does not mean that it's true. Mm -hmm. All right. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you need to talk. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.